Shalom, shalom, and good week to you. Our week, of course, begins on Sunday. It's not a weekend for us. It's already day one of the week, just like when God created the world, and he called it the first day. Uh, we call it Yom Rishon, the first day, and like every day, we like to pray and to stay in God's mindset uh, for us during this corona crisis and times of uncertainty. Of course, author, whoa, Doug Hershey. Of, Here I am. Oh my, that is some prophecies in living color. Wow. Indeed, indeed. So uh, as always, jumping back in here, Chaim Mail Spin, Doug Hershey, we've got lots to talk about today. It is indeed. The, it's the first day of the week. And uh, in case you're wondering, um, we're trying to uh, keep a social distance. Social just, distance, that's... Just, as long as they're not touching, I think it's okay. But Yeah, I don't know if that's a if that's a meter six feet there. It depends uh, well, how large these people are. Uh, indeed. <laughs> you know, like a day is like a thousand years to God. I, sometimes like an inch is like 10 miles probably. So, it you know, it's could probably be. something like that. Very good. We so. love this prayer call because people bring in their, they say the countries they're from, they're putting in their prayer requests and uh, we're praying for them. And it's been, it's really exciting. I mean, to see that this family, this connection, and we're, we actually go deep in some subjects. We, of course, count the Omer. We're counting, the we're counting up to Pentecost, not just because of the dedication of the House of Prayer over here, Vertical Galley House of Prayer, where nations are funding it, nations are donating even in time of Corona. Can you believe it? Uh, and I can't believe it. The, and, and it's happening that the workers are working, and right now we're putting the electricity in. That's what we're doing, the electricity. Um, That's a positive. Ben Franklin was a really good guy, and uh, I think that... Um, ben Franklin. Oh, he's, he would be proud he, he, of the electric was, work. Yes, he flew a kite and touched a key and zapped himself or something like that, but he would be proud that it's now in the house of prayer, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But was it the key of David? It wasn't. It wasn't the key of David. It was the key of... Um, was it a kite or a tabernacle? Nobody ever really knows, perhaps. <laughs> so, but, uh, but yes, Ben Franklin, in the, in the esteemed words of Ben Franklin, yes, that beer is proof that God wants us to be happy. He said that once. Yeah, and holidays, like such as the upcoming Pentecost. It's a mandatory party, so I do hope you register on the link there. Uh, you'll register for the event on Pentecost and join us because it's a divine appointment. And hey, uh, Well, yeah, so, you know, today, as Israel is starting to open up, actually, we should probably begin praying. Yeah. Just, just for fun, uh, just to get things kicked off the right way. Yeah. So, Bing. God, we ask uh, today in Yeshua's name for your blessing on this day as our friends mm -hmm. uh, in the, in the Canada and the U.S. And, yeah. and different places are just waking up. And for those that the, the day is almost ending uh, in Australia and some other places that have been joining us, God, yeah. we thank you for our friends around the world. We ask your favor and your blessing on them right now as yes. they're jumping into with us to, uh, to find out what's going on in Israel, getting the Bible a little bit, getting the word, and to spend some time praying together. Father, we ask that your spirit would lead us in, in today in our both in our conversation mm -hmm. but also in our prayer time God we want to continue to look to you even in the midst of of just more craziness that mm. is continuing around the world as governments are trying to open up and there's lots of fear of whether they would be spreading uh, a, a sort of a second uh, wave of, of infections God mm. we're, we're asking now in Yeshua's name that uh, that you would end it quickly and that uh, you would refocus our hearts on the things that you're doing right now where you would have us what mm. you would have us doing today and so, God, we look to you, we trust you, and we, mm -hmm. we continue to say yes to you, just pushing things out of the way for us and helping our hearts to focus on you and the things that you're doing in this hour. Yes. We are feeling, uh, we're, mm. we're sensing a wafting aroma of a lifting of restri restrictions, yes. and even a, a awakening, as it were, of, of this whole land in, in a way, in a new way, because stores have been closed and now many more open. I mean, we even, didn't we, the other day went uh, before Shabbat and we were able to put our feet in the water and people were out yeah. there. We still have to wear masks outside <laughs> yeah. of the Aliyah Return Center. Um, but it's, it's, there's a feeling of joy that it's, there, it's beginning to, we had is. some juice, didn't we? And that was, that was a fun time. And, uh, you know, it's funny you mentioned being out and about me and, uh, and the esteemed Moshe, Moshe, mm. Moshe Melspin, your brother. He does the worship here. Yes. Yeah. With Lightways worship. Great guy. And uh, fabulous beard. We, mm. uh, we bearded men like to stick together, but, uh, Moshe and I went out, we did a little, uh, shopping and we, uh, talking about everybody just sort of wanting to be out and around. Israel really is coming alive again. It's like, wow. 
whilst yeah. it's you know it's kind of funny if we speak honestly about how Israelis really are. It's like it's like the government just kind of cracks it open and says, okay, you can go a little bit further, and most Israelis are like, yeah. I'm going out. So yeah. like most most everybody was out and about. We stopped and got a falafel, and of course right. there's the, the the falafel guys got masks and gloves, but and people are sort of keeping their distance, but. But uh, Joshua Aaron saw him out with his kids at the with the Juice Man, where you and I were the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mrs. Ryan Talley, Ryan and Jesse. Jesse was out around mm. running some errands. I saw Dahlia Rosenfeld, who was out walking around. Dahlia is uh, Barry and Dahlia Rosenfeld um, is uh, I've they're known, Galileans too. They are also Galileans. Galileans. But uh, but Barry Rosenfeld is uh, is my editor. He's my Israeli editor. So right. anytime that I, I do anything of writing before it goes to a U.S. Publisher, I want somebody who can uh, edit my English, but also understand my Hebrew concepts and things. So he's actually my first round of editing before it goes to right. uh, some some any south. So it was just fun to just to be out and around, out and around town, and bump into yeah. all these friends. And some most of them were were masked, and we were like, Dahlia, Dahlia, is that you? And she's right. like, Dog, I wish I could hug you and kiss you. Yeah. But um, but I want to show you a little purchase I made. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, it looks like a lunchbox, but yet it's something even better. Oh, here in Israel, it is the titanium coffee kit. Now, titanium I can't tell kit. you how excited I am about about this because I've wanted one for a long time, and of course, this is just one of the things that you have when you're out and around. But I'm going to take this one back to the states. But what it is, it's a little like a lunchbox coffee kit just for coffee. So you can put like your Turkish coffee or whatever spices in there, and yeah. then. Uh, and then what you got is a little, you got your little, uh, your little gas, hooky duke. A burner, yeah. And, uh, and then this little thing, it's almost like the lunar landing um, thing for coffee. That's right. And then you, you hook all that in. Titanium, I like it. Exactly. And then you've got, oh, yes. you've, it's brand new, still has some plastic in it. And then you got your coffee, you got your water in there. And of course. And then when you're done, you've got the coffee. Blip, 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 blip. Wow. Glorious. I can't tell you how excited I am about this. So it's it's something that like all Israelis have their beach kit where they got their shade little thing they pull out Indeed. and their their whole their beach kit and then they have their their hiking and it's kind of like an army uh, kit. It like is. All the soldiers have this and they'll they'll pull it out and take it out to like yeah, we had that didn't we on the back of the tank. Over in, in 2006, over next in in uh, next to Beach Build, uh, next to the Litani River in mm. Lebanon, or we're like yeah, we're like, that's great times. You put cardamom spice in there, didn't you? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So these are the different so, spices. So what what happened one time? I was out hiking with a good friend Brian Slater. Yes, yeah, you know Brian. Love that guy. He's he does a lot of stuff with Holocaust survivors down in, in Netanya. The mm. abundant bread of salvation is mm. his ministry in Netanya. Great guy. Ezra Adventures always takes groups to him. But he and I were out hiking in northern. Galilee and at Gamla. Okay. And we're back on one of these far trails and we were heading out towards this one particular lookout. And right as we get out to the lookout, we see a couple guys there. And as they see us coming, they turn around and they, in Hebrew, they say, Hey, you're just in time for coffee. And as we walk up, they're literally pouring coffee and handing it to us. So even before we met or oh. we were introducing ourselves, it's like an Israeli thing. It's like coffee yeah. is always on. It's ready to go. And they were using one of these little kits. And then we sat down and had like some snacks with them and had a little break and all had coffee together and talked about the Galilee. And then it was off we went and it was just, it was awesome. There's so many Lots places to hike and to travel. And I think the minute that people are allowed to go more than 100 meters from their house, which at this time you can, it's supposed to still be for essential business. But it's, it's really, we're feeling the, we're feeling like we're also ahead of certain countries. And we're yeah. feeling that it's just about to fully open up. I know everyone's going to be traveling to the galley. They're tired of being in their house. They want to come to the galley. They want to stay in our guest houses. Normally, we have a lot of international stay here at the Aliyah Return Center, but I have a feeling a lot of Israelis will come, be blessed, and be part of this charity, see what's going on. It's going to be really tons of fun. But a quick thing about Gamla, a great reason why people go to Gamla and they hike is this fortress. It's one of the Decapolis, I believe, right? Mm. One of the ten outposts of the Roman Empire. And in or became it was it was a Jewish town, but the, the, the Romans came and they it was attacked numerous times. It's here in the Galilee. An interesting sermon that that I heard about Gamla was that the way they took Gamla is they went down to the bottom of the of the main outer defense wall, and because they didn't have cement back in the day, mm. which keeps the different pieces together. The Romans were able to, well, under volley of arrows, they were able to put a shields up and pull out. Yeah, uh, started digging out the digging foundation. Digging out the stones. foundation of the actual wall, yeah. and eventually 
it just fell. So that shows me that nowadays we have a smart thing called cement. Now, it wasn't invented at that time, which just mm. forces it together. It keeps, because we are all fitted together, part of God's dwelling. All of us, each of us, different stones. But what the, what the cement is like is like the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit keeps us all together, even if we're across the world over there or here in Israel. We feel that we are inseparable and nothing can come to pull, no matter what trials come, no matter what Roman army comes, whatever it is is not going to be able to pull one of us apart and another one of us apart. And, and another great lesson from there, from that exact thing, the book of Proverbs talks about that if the foundations are destroyed, what then can the righteous do? Right. So the reason that you're even jumping in with us here, the reason you're connecting, the reason we're even doing this is to give you opportunity to strengthen your foundation. Get some yes. of that cement pack right in the uh, crickety cracks of yeah. the schmickety schmacks and to make sure that nothing uh, falls apart so that when... When somebody's coming to pick away your foundation, they can't get their grubby little fingers in the in the in the That's holes. True. And so this is all about strengthening your foundations yes. and getting in the scriptures. And, uh, and normally we go through. We'll read a psalm, as you know. We read Psalm seventy-two for the seventy-second birthday of Israel, and we went over some of the amazing miracles that have happened. But when I was in my prayer time, you know, every Friday we do we have shifts, and we go all night praying on Friday over here. Tons of fun. It's it's a bit of a sacrifice because you sometimes are tired the next day. Mm. Um, but what happened is I was there at the Sea of Galilee, is where I did my my one. I was at the Sea of Galilee at the dawn. Prayer time ended at the dawn right of on. the sun. Of over the Golan Heights, and I was just thinking, and I'm like, Lord, show me what your word is. Every every time a Friday comes, it's like I get a new word, uh, and so I was like, what are you saying? And this really hit me is there's a family reunion that needs to take place, family reunion. And you know, it's not who you might think. It was actually Isaac and Ishmael, a family reunion. Yeah, sons of Abraham. Have you ever had a family reunion? Let's say it's Passover. Let's say it's Pentecost, I don't know what holidays, let's say it's what is it, Thanksgiving or ta Tabernacle, Sukkot. And, uh, and so you're getting, you're getting together with your family and you're like, hey, I haven't talked to my cousin in a long time. And that's what I recognize is there's this, over the years, due to things that have happened, there has been a, quite a separation of family. We're all sons of Abraham and that brings us all the way back to Genesis, what is it, 26, 27, mm -hmm. uh, brings us back to when this all started. Who are the Arab people? Now there's Persians, there's Arabs. So I really started to think about it. I thought, what a joy when this when this family reunion comes together back into Abraham's tent. And I wrote a song about it. I'm not going to play it for you, don't worry. Uh, but I wrote a song about it and I just, I'm like, like thank God. Okay. Uh, no, but I just, I realized it's going to be so marvelous because um, maybe even this Corona, who's to know? Maybe in this time, hmm. we're like, you know what? We'd rather not be fighting each other. We'd rather not be, let's jihad, you know. As soon as Christmas time comes around, you have this jihad bells, jihad bells, jihad all the way. Uh, but that, no, but wow. there, there is a different approach mm -hmm. where you can say, what if we will come under the one true creator of the world as brothers and sisters, truly as cousins, because Abraham's our father. Amen. Yeah, so we'll so, go over that today. So, uh, Cindy Cartonis, all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, is the first to say good morning. So she gets the Book high five. Book your toe. Book your toe. <laughs> Claudia checking in. Sarala. Stasia, of course, from Atlanta. She's always on, which is great news. Stasia! Uh, Lisa White from Down Under. Ruth from Maine. Uh, Ruth, yes, that was a coffee kit. It's amazing. It's awesome. It'll be back in Maine. I'll be camping with it in a very short amount of time. Yes. Um, let's see who else who else Betsy's already shared the stream by the way sharing is way caring go. way to go so if you really care about us if you love us if you think that if you're a real Christian no I'm kidding but, uh, <laughs> but listen share the stream if you don't like it make sure you share it twice because that's how we like yeah. to, to spread it out and uh, Pam it's, checking in and it's such a way to graph people in you know the whole analogy of the uh, olive graph. tree that uh, that how we're grafted in. There's original branches and there's branches that were that are cultivated and there's ones that are wild by nature and they are wow. wild. Wild child. <laughs> and uh, we're the wild childs and they are grafted in and it's so cool. But I said, hey, even this prayer thing, reaching out and you're able to graft them in by sharing a stream to them. That's a great way to encourage them to bless them. And you know this thing, it's not totally over, but we're getting through it and we're maintaining God's perspective. I like it. What is God saying through this all? Not just like what it. is, what's the latest conspiracy hype, you know? 
And there's a lot to be hyped. So on. we're going all the way back. So listen. To Genesis 26. Genesis 16, actually. 16, Genesis 16. Genesis 16 is where we're going. 16. So this is going to be a little controversial today. Yes. It's going to be a little different than probably what you've heard. Right. But, um, you know. So you mean we're going to talk about Arabs and Jews in Israel? Oh, my goodness. Crazy. So as I teach around uh, around the U.S., around some different places, and we talk about uh, Israel and Palestinians and Arabs and all the how is everybody getting along? Are they not getting along? Is it a war zone? Is it really safe to be mm. in Israel? It's kind of a war zone there. Don't you need like bulletproof everything? Right. And uh, you know, and so there's all of these things that are that are thrown around. And oftentimes, as I'm bringing groups here with Ezra Adventures, people are often uh, asking, or if I'm speaking somewhere, there what people really want to know is whose side are you on? Right. And are you pro-Israel? Are you pro-Palestinian? Are you are you this? Are you that? Because like, people want to pigeonhole whatever the view right. is and be on the right side. And, you know, it's it's I, you know, I think it's a fair question because it's the same question that Joshua asked. That's exactly what I was reading. Yeah. You were exactly yeah. going to read that. Yeah. Well, we are on the same page again. So here, Joshua <laughs> is about ready to take Jericho. That's right. They're camped out and a guy shows up with a sword drawn. Right. Which means he's ready to fight. And Joshua decides to ask a question, are you for us or for our enemies? This is in Joshua 5. 5. 5, yeah. 13 and 14. He says, are for you for us or for our adversaries? Are you for us or for our enemies? I'm, Whose side are you I'm on? I'm literally there. Isn't that crazy? You literally <laughs> are. And so are you for us or for our enemies? And the response is, neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence. So... What a strange thing. He says, are you for us or for enemies? And God says, mm -mm. nope, neither. Right. neither, 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 which is really funny because who told Joshua to go flatten Jericho? Mm -hmm. The Lord did. But yet the Lord was saying, listen, I'm above this whole right. thing and um, I'm just letting you know that I'm on the scene. And so, yeah, as believers in Yeshua, on the Galilean bean scene or well, that was that was probably the, the, the next day, probably okay. after. Okay. But uh, that would be cool to do a, galley, a bean scene down in Jericho. Sometime. Jericho. That would be a, a hoot and a half. <laughs> but, uh, but listen, what, what's amazing about that is uh, in, in Ephesians 2 and Ephesians 3, the scriptures talk about us seated with Yeshua in heavenly places above the powers and principalities. Right. So all of the stuff that's going on down here with the conflicts and the wars and all that, God is saying, I'm above all that. Joshua is saying, whose side are you on? And the commander of the army of the Lord of hosts. The, the, he's like the top general commander, and he says, I'm not on either side. Right. Like, don't, I'm, not even, I'm not even functioning on where you're at. I'm up here. So right. as believers, when you're functioning here in Israel, and this is something all of my groups here, is that right. God has put you on uh, in heavenly places. You're seated with him in heavenly places. Why would you want to get off of that place and come down and fight in the, in, in the mud and choose sides one way or the other? Right. Because the Lord is above those powers and principalities. And he seated you there with him. So when you're starting to choose sides of like, well, those darn Palestinians or those crazy Israelis or they're this or they're right. that or whose side or maybe that side. When you're starting to go there, that means you've already fallen off. And the Lord has positioned you beside him, not only for intercession, but so that you can get a different view. And that's part of why, you know, functioning here as, as believers in the land, uh, right. we have such a profound opportunity to not only share things and see things differently, but uh, but to be able to to get into prayer and get into worship with like the different right. prayer houses that are around to really make a difference with what's going on as we're functioning from from the right. place that the Lord's already placed us in. We've had a few people join us from from the east, like Malaysia, some from Singapore. I was on a trip to Singapore; it was amazing, cleanest airport. You can't even chew; you feel guilty if you're chewing gum. I like wow. to chew gum. You feel very guilty because you're not allowed to. I mean, you can get. I think even jail time for uh, if you spit a gum on the ground. Well, which I think that should be adopted by the entire world. But uh, <laughs> uh, so you're sitting in jail and the guy's going, "So what are you in for?" I won't say. No, chewing, chewing gum. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I was in here for loitering. <laughs> I loiter a lot. <laughs> no, so, um, but here's the thing: <clears throat> is that um, when I was there, I had a had a revelation. What is Pentecost about? What is all this about? Mm. It's about reversing the Tower of Babel. Can you believe it? It's just a thought. Because what happened is the people wanted to go against God. They wanted to build this big tower and go up to And even it was kind of like saying, if God's going to flood the world again, Nimrod, the, the warrior, uh, the hunter. So Nimrod's like, hey guys, if God's going to try to flood the world, well, we're going to go up in this tower and he won't be able to 
get us again, even though he says, I will never, here's a rainbow, I'm never going to flood the world. But, uh, but then he's like, we're going to go against God. We're going to go right up to him and give him a punch. You know, it's like a rebelliousness is like what Nimrod was doing. And long story short, though, uh, God said, let's confuse that. Let's go, go down there and confuse their languages. What happened on Pentecost? You have these Galileans, okay? And they're up in Jerusalem in an upper room. And it's the appointed time. We're counting up 250. And we're on day 24, right? So we're counting up to 50. Is it 23 or 24? I think it's 20. 23? Three. I think it's 23. I think. 23, yes. And tonight we count 24. So uh, they're up, in, up there in the upper room. What happens? The fire, the Holy Spirit comes, and they start to speak in Parthian, uh, Assyrian. Uh, it says languages of Asia. Asia. Spoke, spoke Asia. Now you can trace back some of the language divisions mm. from ancient Chinese, which was a which was spoken at the time of the disciples. There was an ancient Chinese dialect, um, and so so these these Galileans were were doing the exact opposite of what separated man. They're bringing them together, but not against God under His Holy Spirit and under His authority. So that's what's just so amazing is that uh, there is a reversal happening right now as we lead up to Pentecost. So why don't, we, why don't we pray on that a little bit and then we'll jump into Genesis 16. Let's do it. Including the Arabs is my point. They're going to be in heaven too. Exactly. So let's do it. Yeah. So Lord, I just pray that we would uh, have this perspective of the commander of the hosts of the armies of heaven when he approached in Joshua chapter 5 verse 14 when he showed up and, and we just thank you that he said, I'm for neither. I'm for the, I'm for the Lord. And uh, so that means there's a plan for all the nations. We know this. There's a plan for the Arab people, for the Persian people, for the uh, Aramean people. There's a plan for the uh, every single person, the Norwegians, for the Iceland Icelanders. There's a plan. And, uh, and, and we're going to come together. There's a plan for Israel, yes, for the Jewish people. And it's a coming together. And it's written in here in your word, Lord. Show us. Give us revelation even today as we go into these exciting things which pertain to right now. And they pertain to us, and they pertain to this corona lifting and the, the moving forward, and for the and it pertains to the marriage supper coming uh, up in the future. So just bless this uh, family reunion that we can be a part of now as we prepare for the marriage family reunion in heaven. Amen, wow. amen. Genesis, Genesis 16, 10, if you're with us, we're going to just read through a couple verses and talk about it and just pray about it, because in this passage of Scripture... Uh, is probably, and I'm not, I'm, I'll say right out of the gate, I'm not a, uh, a linguistics ex ex expert. I'm right. not uh, a, a Bible scholar of sorts, but as far as I've seen, and we'll talk about it, this is probably one of the most, there's a, a sentence in here is one of the most poorly translated uh, pas passages of Scripture, just simply because it communicates something in English that the Hebrew actually explains something very different. And so I want to be able to point that out because it has shaped our view of the Arab people in a, in a very negative sort of way. Right. And so uh, it says, Moreover, the angel of the Lord said to her, speaking to Hagar, let me back up, Hagar is tossed out uh, and uh, out into the desert. But even before, who is Hagar? She is an Egyptian. Very important to remember as we're going to get into what this means. But she's an Egyptian. Very good. So, so Hagar is tossed out. And uh, she is pregnant and um, not sure what to do, kind of freaking out. And an angel shows up and says, says to her, I will greatly multiply your descendants so there will be too many to count. Isn't that funny? She's saying, he's saying that to, uh, to, to Hagar because that was something that was promised yeah. to, to Abraham and then Isaac and Jacob. Yeah. So the same blessing of Abraham is, yeah. is, is, is extended to, to Hagar. The angel of the Lord said to her further, Behold, you're with child and you'll bear a son and you'll call his name Ishmael. Because the Lord has given heed to your affliction. He'll be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand will be against him. And he'll live the east of all of his brothers. Then she called on the name of the Lord who spoke to her, saying, You are a God who sees. Have I even remained alive here after seeing him? Have you ever stopped to think that doesn't make any sense? Mm, yeah. Be because an angel so shows up and says, Oh, by the way, uh, you're pregnant, and uh, you're going to have a son, but uh, everybody's going to hate him. He's going to be fighting against this guy, and everybody will be fighting against him, and he's going to live somewhere far away from the rest of his family. And she's like, yay, God, thank you. Right. I just had this incredible encounter. That's amazing. And it doesn't make any sense yeah. in English. But mm -hmm. in Hebrew, uh, when he's saying that you shall call his name Yishmael, it's actually a, a name with a promise. And so... Yishma, it's, there's, there's actually two words that are connected to it. Yishma, which is really taken from the word Shema. Right. 
very Hebraic name. Shema very, uh, El, Yish Shema El. Yeah. And so El is the is like the singular title of uh, of God. And so quite uh, so the uh, the word Shema means not only just to hear, right. but to but to hear with the intention to obey and to follow. Right. It's an action hearing. It's a hear and obey. It's a hear and obey is what it is. And and really for for our Christian listeners and followers, it's sort of the the the, the Shema in Deuteronomy six four. It's kind of like the John three sixteen of sorts of the of the Jewish world. It's like Shema every Israel. Jewish person, if they're in fear, if they're about to be killed, it's pretty much the last prayer on any Jewish person's lips ever, which is Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu. In the art when you're when you're in the middle of battle and you need protection, like Shema Yisrael, it's hear O Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. Very famous prayer. And this here is one of the arch enemies of Israel, Ishmael, the father of the Semitic, the Arabic people, essentially. And here he has this kind of Hebrew name. It gets more interesting. So it's it's Yishmael, which means that to, so talking about hearing with the intention of responding, but it's actually connected to the to the name of God, which literally means his name literally literally means that God will hear yeah. and respond. That's like a it's a name with a promise. It's right. this amazing, powerful name. And so, uh, as God a, will hear and respond. Yep. As it continues, you'll call his name Ishmael. He'll be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand will be against him. Where the confusion lies is mm. in the word against, because in Hebrew there is no word for against. Did you hear what I just said? There is no Hebrew word for against in this in this uh, in this pattern. There is this, a Hebrew word for against called neged. But it does not appear here. It's not in the in the language. It's not in this verse. So literally in Hebrew, um, <laughs> literally in Hebrew, it's you would read it in Hebrew as Yado Vachol Veyad Kobo, which literally means and it's, it's like in his hand will be uh, will have the ability. Uh, you you and in within his hand will be like everything Kolbo, like a a one stop shop. You know, like Walmart it, or whatever. It has everything in there. So he's saying in his hand will be everything in his hand. So, so a, a very I don't see literal, the against there. Yeah, you're right. A, a, a very literal translation, exactly what Haim said. It would no, another way to explain it was his hand has the power and the means for everything, uh -huh. and, and and the hand of all will be with him. And so, I, before yeah. talking with Haim about this, when I was doing some research years ago, I sent it to a friend that works in Hebrew English translation and just sent him a little screenshot, like a little page slice of the of the Hebrew, and just said, "Hey, I'm having I'm having trouble like." Uh, Translating, I'm learning some Hebrew, and could you just translate this for me? Right. And what he, uh, he, his response in the email is uh, was that what this what this little phrase means in English is his hand is in everything, and everything is in his hand. And so there is nothing negative that's being communicated here. There's no against. There's no fighting. There's no anything. It's actually talking about um, you know like uh, sort of a like in English we talk about like the like the um, like a jack of all trades like somebody who, who can do anything anything he wants to do is available to him he's really good at everything yeah he has the opportunity like the world is at his fingertips that's what the angel is actually speaking to Hagar right. about about his son or about her son that is, right. is going to be born then you, you look also there's a very interesting study we can't go to it now way deep way interesting about the names of all the wells like the name of the well where he went to was called uh, Lechai Roi the well the, the wells of Abraham, the wells of Isaac, the wells of Jacob, these are all extremely and they all have a teaching, they all have a meaning, very interesting meaning. Well I've, I've never heard anyone teach on it in, in the United States or anywhere, except here in Israel. And uh, so this one is Lechai unto life, like Lachaim is to life. If we go like this and we say Lachaim, 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 to life. So the well that the well that this angel found Hagar at when he does gives these blessings was called Lechai Roi, the shepherd shepherd to life. So he's is this wow. is God shepherding Ishmael to life? Or is it like, no, you're just a wild person and you're just a, a nuisance? So actually I'm glad you mentioned that. Let's let's back up. It says he'll be a wild donkey of a man. Well what right. about a wild donkey of a man? Well in right. Hebrew it's actually referring to we because of the word against we often think of then of the word wild as like crazy and uncontrollable, mm. like a wild man, like brawling or fighting in drunken bar fights or whatever. Mm. But there's also positive spins on the word wild. So you right. have, you might have like wild ivy or wild strawberries. It's talking about right. something that grows and, uh, and reproduces without a lot of effort, without it being cultivated. It's just constantly growing and right. constantly going. And so in, in Hebrew, the word that's being used here actually refers to an onager which is an animal that uh, is sort of a, a cross between um, 
it's a large it's a large mammal belonging to the horse family. Mm. So, uh, and it's native to the deserts of Syria, Iran, Pakistan, India, Tibet, and Israel. In fact, the last time I was on one of my four by four trips with Ezra Adventures down in the Negev, one of our um, our, our guides like stopped the stopped, stopped the car and gave everybody binoculars and pointed on the hillside because part of the uh, the uh, Israeli um, uh, nature organizations that's like starting to reintroduce some of the native animals. One of the things they've been re reintroducing has been the Binyaniger, which is a cross between, it has the size of a horse. It's like a horse mm -hmm. body, but its legs are shorter like donkeys. Right. And so, uh, so what you have is, is sort of the, the best of both worlds in terms of a nomadic lifestyle. So, and they're starting to be reintroduced to the Negev Desert and are really beginning, their, their populations down there are just really beginning mm. to, to, to grow. And so if you're living, to wrap all of this up, and then I want to go back into prayer, especially yeah. for, our, our, for our Arab uh, brothers, yes. is, that, is that what he's describing is he'll be a wild onager. He'll be a fruitful onager of a man. Now, an onager was a sought-after animal in the time of Abraham because if, you, if you're living a nomadic lifestyle where you're packing up everything and you're living in tents and you're packing up gear on animals and going from place to place, if you had something that was, had the size of a horse that could carry a lot of weight, but a shorter center of gravity with donkey legs, that was a really sought after animal that you could breed that with your, with your flocks and be creating a much stronger, much wealthier, um, uh, wealthier uh, flock with, in terms of size and strength. So an onager at the time of Abraham was, a, was an animal that was sought after. It was a very valuable uh, a very valuable animal in that nomadic sort of Bedouin lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so what God is communicating here to, to Hagar is, um, is that, um, that he would be, a, he'd be really valuable to his family, that he would be a man of fruitfulness and strength and impart his strength to others. So not only would he be this sort of this fruitful donkey of sorts so that it would strengthen his entire family, strengthen his entire herd, mm -hmm. but, uh, but he would be one that would be sought after and that anything that he put his hand to would be successful. Anything that he, he had the power in his hands to do anything and anything he wanted to do was in his hands. And so when an angel shows up in the Bible and speaks blessing or, or says anything, never, in no other place in the scriptures does an angel show up and curse somebody mm -hmm. and say, you know, you're pregnant. That's, that's too bad because your son is right. going to be an awful, terrible person. Everybody's right. going to fight against him. Everyone, he's going to fight. No one will even like right. him. And he's going to live so far away from his family that um, uh, nobody will like him. So uh, God bless you. Off we go. Yeah. Like, like that doesn't happen. That's, no. not, that's not the character of who God is. And so this angel is showing up in Hag to Hagar in her uh, probably worst point of her life, desolate, right. alone, out in the desert, pregnant, not sure what to, what to yeah. do. And, and the angel comes and says, listen, you're pregnant and his name will be Ishmael. God will hear and answer his cry and he's going to be fruitful. He's going to be a blessing and bring strength to his family and anything he puts his hands to, he'll be successful. 100%. And the thing is that he wasn't also condoning leaving Sarah and the division there. Like we said, the family coming back together, a family reunion. He wasn't condoning that, that separation. He was actually saying, hey, even though it's uncomfortable back there, go back. The family needs to be together. It's not supposed to be that's juxtaposition, it. separate. No, it's not what the, that's not what the angel says. I'm here to condone. Great job, you leaving. She left in her own vol volition because it was uncom very uncomfortable with Sarah was not being nice over in the, in the Abraham's tent. A little mm. jealousy or something. Indeed. But uh, one thing led to another. Is he, she, the angel says, go mm. back. Go back and, and put yourself with her in the tent. And secondly, the one way I could say the, sh the shepherd, the, 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 the name of that well, could be the shepherd. Or it could be, which is, which is what the most common thing is, is lechai roi is the one who sees me. Do we believe that God still Beautiful. sees not only his land? It says right there in verse 14 about the well was called... Uh, the one who sees me. It's down here in the Judean desert. And uh, so we believe that God not only is watching over his land, Israel, it says he's, his eyes are upon it throughout the year, but also he's watching out for the cousins, for his other sons of Abraham, the sons of Ishmael. And here's how we wrap this into a most amazing promise is Isaiah 19. Because Isaiah yeah. 19 is so clear where it says, Egypt, my people. You know, Isaiah chapter 19 says, Egypt, my people, Assyria, my handiwork and Crazy. Israel, my inheritance, these three will be unified in serving the God of Israel in the midst of the land. 
So there's going to be an altar to the God of Israel. They're going to be speaking Hebrew or the language of Canaan down there in Egypt. Uh, it's just going to be a, an amazing time of peace, and there's going to be a, a highway of peace, you know, which there is an ancient road called Via Maris, or the Way of the Sea. It's an old Roman road, which mm -hmm. camels do not like salt water, so it would have been the Sea of Galilee. When it says the Way of the Sea, that's the Sea of Galilee. And because that's the perfect stopping point when you're going up to Syria or down to Egypt, and yeah. it connects right through the Galilee. So Beautiful. my point is, there is a family reunion coming, definitely in, in the wedding feast when Yeshua will serve us. <laughs> but there's also a, a, a promise that there's going to happen before that. And we can all be part of that. And, and I really, you, you'd be surprised because I had to serve to defend the defenseless here. And there were Muslim armies. There was Arab armies that were trying to kill us, uh, shooting missiles on us, and uh, and killing uh, friends of mine. And so one would say, well, hey, if you're talking with Chaim, he's probably doesn't he probably doesn't have any Arab friends. He probably you're talking to Doug. He probably doesn't have any Arab friends. He's probably just Jewish people or just uh, Israelis. Quite the opposite, believe it or not. And I think that's because seeing the bigger picture yeah. has has given uh, us the ability to guard our hearts, protect our hearts. And say these are God's, God's children. And you know what? It's not like let's let's say twenty five percent of the time let's worship Allah and do Islam, and then maybe seventy five percent of the time we'll we'll go and worship the God of Israel, and we'll work some some deal here where yeah. we can get along. No, there's one Creator, there's one God, which is a blessing for them, which is a blessing for us too. And I was going to make a make a point as well to tie, and then we're going to go right into prayer here on this on this point because the. Uh, the problem that in this region is not an, an Arab Jewish problem. Right. The, the problem is Islam, if yeah. we could speak so clearly and so directly. Or well, the it, scourge of the earth, however you call it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't until the, the, the seventh century that that really yeah. began coming in, and that became predominantly uh, a, a religion within the Arab communities. Mm -hmm. the, the Arab people themselves are wonderful, beautiful people. They're right. Just enwrapped uh, not all arabs of course but yeah much of the culture it's become a cultural thing as far as islam and islam anywhere that islam goes it really pulls down an entire society and uh, there's a direct correlation between um between even even within the within this region there's a direct correlation between the the influence and the power of the palestinian authority which is really sort of a quote unquote a modern a modern a moderate yes, Muslim right. government. Mm -hmm. Anywhere that there is a, a a Muslim government, the 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 more strength and more established they become, the more human rights just drop off. Yeah, uh, just drop off the list. And so there is this just um, this awful crazy thing that goes along with yeah. that. But my point is, the the problem here isn't so much of Jew versus Arab. The problem here is the influence of Islam and what that does to a society. Yeah. And so, again, like Chaim was saying, I've got some Arab friends in Bethlehem and Nazareth, and they're, they're great brothers in the Lord, and we have them come up to Joshua Aaron's place for, for worship nights. Oh, and yeah. So. A great time, beautiful people. The Arab people are beautiful. The, the, the hospitality in Arab oh, homes yeah. is like second to none. But it's, it's Abrahamic. Indeed. And... And it's, but it's, it's the influence of Islam, which is really the, the sort of the shroud of darkness that's over the whole, yeah. the whole thing that's causing much of the problem. Even throughout this coronavirus, we've had this word that we've repeated again and again, that it's not about the coronavirus, <laughs> but it's really about the call of Cyrus. And you think, what is Cyrus? Iran. It's Iran. But where did this word Iran come? It used to be Persia. When did it switch to be called Iran? Many people don't know. It's when they met with Hitler. Some of the leaders met with Hitler and said, oh, Aryan, you guys are Aryans? We also, we are Aryan, Iran, we are Iran. That's how it switched from Persia to be Iran, Aryan. That's strange, but people don't talk about this much. But this is what happened, and there was quite a, 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 a bad spirit, a bad spirit. We agree, Hitler was a bad spirit, mm -hmm. and that bad spirit, uh, and ever since Muhammad, in, in the days, it was almost like a uh, hijacking of destiny. A hijacking of destiny because Cyrus had a great kingdom had a great destiny he was helping yeah. build the temple he was helping build David's palace he was helping with the Aliyah he was helping build a place of prayer just like we're doing right here he would he would be the biggest donor for the Aliyah return center work but uh, mm. and that was such a legacy <clears throat> for it but now it's quite the opposite because of this uh, yeah. hijacking of destiny. Well, I think we should pray for our cousin's destiny. They're our cousins because they're also sons of Abraham. 
And so as we take some time, we'll pray for, uh, for some, even in places around uh, your homes. And I know there's, there's uh, mosques in, uh, in Denver, Colorado. I'm seeing Julie, Julie Immers jumping on uh, close to uh, some of the, uh, the, the congregations right. I speak at in, in Colorado. There's, uh, of course, Detroit. There's other places around the United States that's having right. this influx of, of Arab or, or Muslim, um, uh, Muslim influence. Right. And so this is just simply uh, an aspect of darkness, and we, we want to pray into that. So as we're praying for that, to that shroud to be lifted, you can be praying for your Arab neighbors as well, because wherever they're at, they are, they're all connected to, to part of this promise. And there are, there's an amazing promise in Isaiah 60 we'll talk about here in just a second. And there's but, just such a beauty with their sincerity and genuineness. Yeah. Sincere and gen- one can be sincerely and genuinely wrong, but it's still a beautiful thing to see a sincerity. For example, it's Ramadan right now. And uh, see, the Ramadan is when the fasting happens, even for a kid age, what is it, age eight, age uh, mm-hmm. eight and up, even water, fasting, water and food all the way till, um, till I think it's six, uh, till the sun goes down all the way then till, till uh, four in the morning the next day. Mm-hmm. You're allowed to eat during the evening times till 4 a.m. And then no more eating all the way till the <laughs> sun goes down. Every, for a whole month, imagine entire families doing this. And you're like, why are you doing this? Muhammad told me to do it. Uh, it's in the Quran, we must do it, or it's in the Hadith. But it, it's great when suddenly some very good friends of ours here in Nazareth, uh, they say, you know what, my eyes have been opened. Yeshua appeared to me, and, and there's story after story in like even Iran, or even, you know, even in Iraq or Syria, like this guy comes to my homeless shop in the middle of the night. He has come, I say, we are close, we are close. And he says, no, I, I would like to eat, please, hummus, hummus. And I look, he has ho- holes in his hands. And he says, you will be this happy. A friend of mine, he says, uh, from, from Persia, he's like, he, he, he was, this is a separate story. He says, you will be kudus, kudus, holy, kadosh in Hebrew. You will be holy. And he's like, oh, me? What? How? Mm. I will follow you to my death. So they're very passionate. And it, it's such a good thing when the destiny gets returned to these sons of destiny. And, and that is the number one way that, that Muslims are coming to the Lord right now is having these revelations right. and having right. these uh, divine encounters. So, yes. so God, we ask now in yes. Yeshua's name for your continued divine encounters upon our, yes. our friends and our, our, our uh, Arab neighbors and friends. God, we pray that you would pour out your spirit upon right. them. We pray, God, that for those that are living in the, in the darkness of Islam, that that would be broken, that, that you would just simply speak into that, remove that shroud, remove that, uh, that heavy darkness mm that's over them, bring hope and bring life and bring restoration of their hearts. Mm-hmm. And so God, we just speak the, the, the blessing that, uh, that was spoken over Ishmael, that they would be fruitful in their family, that they would bring mm-hmm. life, that anything that they put their hands to would be prosperous, that, um, that, that everything that uh, they wanted to do is for, uh, for the Arab businesses in, in Nazareth or Bethlehem or different places throughout Judea and Samaria with these Arab communities. Father, we pray for the, for the believers that are functioning in business, Lord, that you would bless them and cause their businesses to prosper, even in this time and this, in this season. But God, again, we just ask that you would make yourself real in a very profound way. Mm. We ask, Lord, for visitations for them, for, for visions and dreams in the night that would awaken them to, uh, to who you are and, and, and the power that, uh, of your spirit that can free them from such shackles and free their family of, uh, of, the, of the curse and, that, and the, the, um, that heavy shroud. Mm. I keep thinking of that, just this heavy yeah. darkness and shroud over, the, over their mm. families and over those people, God. So we're, we speak life, we speak destiny. And we speak your fire, even coming up to Pentecost, Lord. We ask that your yes. fire would be upon our Arab brothers. Yes. Uh, i got to just read this really fast. The, the languages that were spoken there, okay, not only Asian, no. Uh, there were uh, Cappadocia, Judea, Mesopotamia, Elamites, Parthians, Medes, you know, the Medes and the Persians. So these were the, the Galileans were speaking to people in Libya. You know, Libya, this, they speak that now Arabic. Cyrene, Rome, uh, Cretans, and what's the last one? Arabians. How about that? So if that wasn't clear enough, Arabians. There was language coming out of the Galileans to minister to the Arabians. That's what Pentecost was. It was a reversal of Babel. I think it's an amazing time to be alive. If you haven't signed up yet for the online dedication of Vertical, Galilee House of Prayer, please go and do that right now because we see God's at work here. Is it easy? No. You know it's hard? Community too. Being in community, different people from different places... We had a guy here once who said, uh, 
he said, you know, I was very offended. I was there with you for some months serving. And he said, in the morning, uh, I would say, you would say good morning and you'd say good morning, but you wouldn't do like the, uh, the head, you know. Mm. So, mm. so he says, I'm very offended. You would, you would offend me like this. I'm like, well, you know, I didn't, I didn't mean to, uh, you know, different cultures from all over the world are here mm. coming together. And that's what God's family is. And it's, it's not just Jewish people. It's not just, it used to be just Hebrew. This whole Bible used to be just, but now it's every nation, every tribe, <clears throat> every tongue will be there as Yeshua serves us in that wedding feast, in the marriage supper of the Lamb. Yeshua is going to gird himself and serve us. How amazing is that? Well, you're, it's funny you talk about that, that uh, connection. In Isaiah 60, verse 7, Isaiah 60, verse 7, it says that all the flocks of Kedar will be gathered to you and the rams of Nebaioth will minister to you and they'll go up with acceptance on my altar and then I shall glorify my glorious house. So Isaiah speaks this and you go, yeah. oh, I wonder what that's about. Well, if you read some of the some of the boring genealogy of in right? Genesis 25, you'll find that uh, the Nabaoth was yeah. the firstborn son of Ishmael, of Ishmael and Kedar was the secondborn son of Ishmael. So it's really saying all the flocks of the sons of Ishmael will be gathered to you. The rams of the sons of Ishmael will be will minister to you and they'll go up with acceptance on my altar and shall glorify my glorious house. Can you think of any other way, any other situation on earth where God could get more glory by bringing some type, a particular people group to his altar? Is it, you know, would it not be God? How much glory would God get when, or what will he get when Jew and Arab are worshiping together? I mean, right. That's, that is just like one of the, one of the premier uh, quote unquote conflicts. It's the only yeah. conflict that has not, uh, like refugee problem conflict that has not been solved within one generation is the whole Palestinian situation. Yeah. The, and really, the, it's because of uh, a lot of the UN and the and UNRWA and some of those organizations. That's a whole different. That's a whole different conversation. But uh, United but, uh, Nations Refugee Watch Agency, which only watches just the one thing. Exactly. But, but that's it. But, yeah, whole can of But the beautiful but, thing but, 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 but. is that God has the answer. And when one releases tit for tat or grudge or he started and he started and the children play together in the toy in the sandbox. This is a good yes. sandbox. When the children can play nicely in the sandbox, everyone's happy because they're following the same father. And that father's a good father. So why don't we, we're coming here to our hour fly so quickly. It does so fast. So we, we, we need to keep praying and we, uh, we yeah. appreciate you. You have been jumping on. Okay. With what us. prayer requests have these people been writing? Well, they haven't been because we haven't been asking. Oh yeah. We've mostly just been talking. This has turned into more of a, of, of a teaching session. See, you never yeah. know what you're going to get. Sometimes, you know, it's kind of like Forrest Gump and the whole box yeah. of chocolate. Sometimes it's just a bunch of really bad jokes. Sometimes uh, you, you just get jealous of our t-shirts. And uh, other times it just comes down to just getting some solid yeah. quality, deep teaching down Go, in the... Going deep. And people, some people say, look, it's, I'd rather more jokes. Other people say, I know, I want deeper teaching. You know what? We just can't please you guys. But what we, we can, can do is we can <laughs> just continue to flow out of the abundance of the blessings God's given us to help realign all of our hearts. So I was there at the sunrise to, you know, on Shabbat morning yesterday... Uh, just just yelling uh, over the Sea of Galilee, hmm. calling forth this Isaiah 19 highway. I was just like saying, holy in Arabic, kudus, kudus, and then uh, kudus inta, you know, holy you are, holy are you, and then in Hebrew, kadoshata, kadoshata, and I just did that hmm. all <laughs> while the sun was rising, <laughs> and I really felt that there was a, something about this coronavirus that we could be on the verge of some of these prophecies coming to pass that have taken centuries of, of on the blood-stained canvas of human history, we are going to see a Savior emerge and produce a redemption, uh, and he's going to be using us. Yalla. Yalla, as Yalla. they say. Yalla. 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 So well, then let's, uh, let's pray a little yes. bit, and we'll wrap this puppy up, kick yeah. it in the pants. And, Send uh, it on to get us a burrito. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, Lord, we thank you for our, our cousins, Lord, our cousins the Arabic uh, people, and uh, the destiny that is over their life, and it's a beautiful thing, and the drums, the drums, and the, uh, the sounds, and the rejoicing, and the la 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 at the wedding, uh, and uh, we just, the tambourines, and the, the, the lute, the oud, 
the uh, all the, the the different kinds of Middle Eastern instruments which form such a harmony as we, your children, learn how to play nice in the sandbox. And we thank you. The sandbox is turning into a Garden of Eden, uh, and and that restoration and the redemption is beautiful. And so we just pray, Lord, help us to not have a mindset of of us versus them, but really a mindset of all the children of Abraham will be blessed as we follow your plan written out for us. Show us what your plan is. Show us how we can be part of establishing your house of prayer here for all nations. How we can be part of welcoming the Jewish people home and being housed and blessing the Arabic people who are here in this land for your honor and for your glory. Yeah, God, we ask for uh, for your continued uh, outpouring of your spirit on our friends around the world as they're watching. Lord, yeah. as, as the uh, some nations are still sort of in their full-on crazy Looney Tune lockdown. Yeah. God, we ask that you would continue to speak to our friends while there's uh, mm -hmm. quarantine, lockdown, other things that are going on. God, we ask that you would just continue to stir life into our hearts just to make the willing choice to push aside uh, an extra round of Netflix yes. or to get distracted with whatever and to get into your word, to spend time just reading, just getting to know, uh, getting to know you, getting to know your land. And so God, we're asking that you would continue to reveal yourself and show yourself strong to our friends around the world. God, with all of the prayer requests that are going on that, that haven't been mentioned or haven't been really talked about today, God, we ask that you would hear and respond and answer each one of those. And, uh, and Lord, we ask for your continued leadership and guidance uh, as we pursue you, as we walk in your way. Yeah. Lord, would you help us to be as faithful to you as you are to us? Yes. And so, God, we ask, even, even today, Lord, we want to remember to pray for, that we're praying for the peace of Jerusalem as your scriptures instruct us to. And God, may there be peace within her walls and prosperity within her citadels mm. and that those would, that love her would prosper. And so of all of our friends that love Jerusalem and are praying for Jerusalem, God, yes. we ask for your prosperity and your yes. favor and your blessing to be poured out on them like water. Yes. Yes, Lord, protection over all these, these Arabic believers, Lord, who maybe are under some threats. Even sometimes more threats than we get is really the Arabic uh, believers in the God of Israel who they say, no, you shouldn't believe that. You should only believe Islam. So protect them. Bless them wherever they are, whether it's in neighboring Syria, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, mm. Egypt, uh, even Gaza. Mm. Wherever it might be, we just pray protection over them and, uh, and that your plans and purposes will succeed and that the economy will also resurrect. Yes, we got a soft taco this show. We got a shawarma wrap up this burrito, Indeed. this quesadilla. You know, speaking of which, I today when I was out in uh, when I was out in Tiberias, I had the first falafel I've had in like two months, and I I'm not embarrassed to say it was freaking glorious. Oh, uh, it was. He made it in oh. front of us. It was like. This is fresh. You know, I that was like an hour and a half ago, and I was right. considering like putting it in a bag and bringing it here and eating it in front of you, but I just. Not a side. I mean, I would have enjoyed that, but yeah. I would have had to suffer for an hour yeah. and a half of just smelling it. Mm. So, um, so I ate that puppy. Mm. Mm. Ate mm. that puppy mm. like a pickle, da and put it in its kennel. Indeed. <laughs> but uh, here, one thing, just as we're as we're wrapping up, I just want to convey this: What is love? What is love? Love isn't just narcissism. That's like one thing. God Himself is love because it's many things coming together. The Father loves mm. the Son. The Son loves the Father. Holy Spirit is is the that cement, you know. And uh, the same thing in a marriage. It's not just one person. It's it's multiple. It's two things become one. So here's the same thing with the with the Jewish people and Arabic people. It's the coming together. And in my wedding, I can only remember how it was when Deanna circled me seven times, and she she says, you know, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Where you go, I'll go. Wow. Where you die, I'll die. And there will be buried the Ruth. What Ruth said. And so I was like, wow, and I commit myself to you. So that's the thing. And when people think, uh, I love Israel, they've got to have the love of not just narcissists. It's all just about one. No. Good word. So it's about coming together. And I think that's happening right now as the COVID is we're getting rid of the vid to do as he bid. And that's going to be wonderful. Till then, try to stay hid and keep it in your lid. Yeah. So, uh... Tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Don't eat bats. It's bad for everybody. These shirts are awesome. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but we're Galileans today. <laughs> Getting a lot of compliments. Indeed. <laughs> Back and forth. We compliment each other quite a bit. You look fabulous in that shirt. You look great. That looks great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you look even better than you did yesterday. 
You look the same as yesterday, but yes. <laughs> okay, well, well, very good. It's time to end this. So tomorrow, 2 o'clock Israel time, 7 a.m. East Coast time. Who knows what time in other parts of the world. You figure that you out. Check it out. You do the math. You figure it out. Sharing is caring. Tell everybody. See you tomorrow. Just for fun.